So, first things first, Lucas, how are you? I'm great, thanks. Thanks for having me. Oh, no worries. So, I'd like to start in the beginning. Okay. What is your first memory of music? Because obviously you grew up around music. What's your first memory of, of all of that? Yeah, uh, my first memory was probably just, I remember watching my, it was probably in Europe actually, because when I was born and the next few years, uh, the highwaymen were on the road, which right. was Dad and Johnny Cash and Chris Christopherson and Waylon Jennings. And they were doing a European tour when I was maybe three or four. Okay. And so I remember watching the show and I remember, I think that was my first musical experience. Did it take you long from that moment to, to kind of understand what your dad was doing? It took me probably a few years after that to understand. I mean, there were some great moments that I re realized how much people loved him. And I could see, of course, at every show how much people really cared. But uh, I remember his 70th birthday. Mm -hmm. I was probably about 13 or 14. and. Uh, so many people came to celebrate his birthday. Um, it was a show at the Beacon Theater. Right. Uh, and it was Eric Clapton and um, Ray Charles, Leon Russell, wow. Paul Simon, uh, Cheryl Crow, uh, uh, Faith Hill, Kid Rock, all these people, or Shania Twain, excuse me, Shania right. Twain, Kid Rock, and they all came and sang dad songs with him on his birthday and, on that, and at, at that point I knew who Kid Rock and Shania Twain was and Ray Charles of course because you know he was friends with dad and sure. um, and Paul Simon and all these folks that I just really loved and then they were all coming to celebrate my father and so that was one moment that really stood out you know and well this was age 13 14 you say so yeah I was young I mean. But I assume at this point you, you yourself were making music. Yes. In fact, I started playing guitar for my dad and his band at around 14 or 15. Okay. So it's around the same age. Around the same time, yeah. And did you gravitate to, towards, immediately towards the music that your father was making and the people you mentioned, Ray Charles, uh, yeah. Eric Clapton? That kind of music really speaks to me. And um, I, I do like new music. There's some mm. new music that I really love. Um, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, the talent of a lot of the people out here, uh, out right now, you know, the songwriting chops and the singing chops of a lot, of, even the pop stars, you know, how well they sing and perform, mm -hmm. even if the type of music isn't something that I'll put and listen to all the sure. time, you know, it's, uh, I, I have a lot of respect for, uh, for the people who can go out and really make a crowd feel like they, uh, uh, they witnessed a show that was worth their money, you know. But uh, so I'm, 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 I appreciate passion and, and skill and performance and practice. I see all those things in a lot of artists out there, and it's, it's uh, there's, there's a lot of good music out there right now. You mentioned three things: passion, skill, and practice. Mm -hmm. Which, which one of those was hardest for you to, to master? Or, no, well, none of them were hard for me, okay. because I. I mean, I already had a passion sure. for the music, um, and I love to practice. I love to play because of my passion. I practice all the time. I still practice okay. all the time. And the skill just comes from that. Right. You know, you just learn, you, you, you learn so much over the years of practicing so much that you build that skill and it's just inevitable you will, you know. And obviously, uh, as you were growing up, you've seen uh, so many great musicians. Yeah. So once, l let me put it differently. When did you write a song that you were proud of? Uh, I was 10 years old. Okay. I wrote a song called You Were It. <laughs> um, and it's a, great, it's a great song. I'm still proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> my dad loved it and he said, oh my God, this is a great song. He recorded it, so okay. it's on uh, his record, It Always Will Be. The song is called You Were It. And I was 11, so that was when I knew that I could be a good songwriter at that point. You know. what, what made you 
write that song? Do, do you remember kind of the kind of the motivation or? Yeah, I remember being in the school bus. I remember driving to school, and I remember hearing this song in my head, and I remember it was just like the song was already written, and I wrote it down, and I started playing it. And showed it to my dad and he loved it. He said, that's good writing. That's actually really good. And I said, oh, that's cool. So he recorded it. And at, at the, as, the, uh, as the years go on, obviously you developed this skill in, in this songwriting. Um, what have you found over the years that, that works for you or that, that a song needs in order for you to like it? It's funny because songwriting to me is the least uh, learnable mm -hmm. skill. I mean, I consider that song that I wrote when I was 11 just as good as the songs that I write now. I, right. it's, it's, it comes from somewhere else. It's a different place. It's, um, I, I don't know how to practice writing. You know, there's no real way to, to develop that. Mm -hmm. You know, and so. That's one thing that <coughs> that I feel like you either have or you don't. You know? Right. But so so you have um, obviously your your father, but now Neil Young, who you've, you've uh, spent a lot of time with. Yeah. Uh, I believe John Fogerty you spent some time with. Yeah. And all these great prolific songwriters. So have they ever? Have you ever talked with them about what songwriting is or how you, where it comes from? No, because I think they all realize the same thing and they all feel the same way about that I do. Is that nobody knows <laughs> you know it's like Neil is very good about letting the music take him when mm -hmm. it inspires him is he's always got a pen and a paper around so no matter what he's doing if he feels like a song is coming he'll sit down and he'll write it down and he'll make sure that he gets that inspiration um, when it comes mm -hmm. and, he, and he and he makes sure that he he you know because it's like songwriting is like waiting for rain you know it's like it, 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 sometimes you, you're in this drought where there's no rain um, and you just have to wait for it to rain it's like the well if you have a well that's dry you know and you don't have any water you can't force it you just have to wait for it to rain and then you have water to drink from and that's how the inspiration and the songs come and sometimes it'll just poof, start raining all of a sudden and you're like, oh shit, I better get a bucket. <laughs> and that bucket is the, the pen and the paper. Right. Yeah. So if we go into, uh, well, your latest record, yeah. do you remember such a moment where it just started pouring and then kind of inspiration came? Well, the latest record was written over years. Uh, I, I wrote a lot of the songs that are on the record a long time ago. Some of them are new, some of them are old. Uh, But for example, the three singles that we're promoting, or the ones that we are we've been promoting, are uh, "Find Yourself," mm -hmm. uh, "Set Me Down on a Cloud," and "Forget About Georgia." And those three songs I wrote a long time ago, years ago. Okay. And so uh, I remember when those moments came, and I and I remember each one of those songs has a story. I mean, "Forget About Georgia" and "Find Yourself" are both about the same girl. Okay. The, That I, that I wrote that song, and her name was Georgia. And, uh, we broke up, and I was on the road with my dad, and we had to play that song, Georgia, on my mind every sure. night. And so it made it impossible to forget about her. So I wrote a song, <laughs> Forget About Georgia. And then Find Yourself, I was feeling that. I said, you know, I said, uh, I, it was a moment of me taking my, my power back and saying, well, I don't, I'm not going to just pine over some girl if right. she doesn't want to I know the love that I deserve so I'm going to you know mm -hmm. take that yeah is, is it difficult then because uh, well like say it's, it's been a while ago since those uh, things happened do songs change over time for you or is it still that uh, original well now uh, Lady Gaga sang on that song sure right and so Having that female voice <laughs> was really nice because then it, it now it allows it, it's it's two perspectives and now that I see that song and then I hear her singing it and I hear that song with her voice on it, it reminds me that I've probably been 
the one who needed to find myself in other relationships too. Right. So it can turn around and point right back at me, you know, because it's also from the girl's point of view. Mm -hmm. And Lady Gaga is the ultimate one to be that one for me to say, hey, I hope you find yourself before I f find somebody else. You know? <coughs> Sorry. And I have to quick, quickly mention Lady Gaga because, uh, well, how did you get her on the record? Because it doesn't seem uh, at first glance as the perfect match. So. Well, she's an incredible singer sure. and songwriter herself. And I think she loved the song. And I, she loved it so much, she gave me a really special gift with, with the, some of the lyrics of that song. And I felt like that meant so much to me that I thought, if I'm going to put this out, I don't care if we don't list it as her name, I don't care if we don't, you know, I don't want to use her, sure. but I think that it would be, because we were friends and we are friends, uh, it, it meant a lot to me to have her a part of it, even if it's just in the background. Right. And so she really added a lot to it and uh, she sings her ass off, so it really me makes the song mean more with her on it and she agreed graciously to sing on it and so we did it. And then, uh, I think it was only released just a, a week ago or so, but uh, also with your father, Willie Nelson and the Boys, the second volume. Yeah. So going through that process, and then obviously you've been playing music since uh, together since you were 10 years old, or probably earlier. Yeah. But how has that, that relationship developed over the years, and in, in that musical relationship with your family? Uh, well, we just, we just, that's the way that we stay in touch. Okay. You know, that's the playing music together is the way that we that we get to hang out because he's on the road and I'm on the road and my brother's on the road. He does his own thing, um, Micah. And so we try and play as much music together as we can so that we can be together, you know, mm -hmm. and be on the road together. And then growing up with your father on the road, was that difficult? No, no, it was, it was nice because that's why I decided to play music was right. so that I could go out with him. You know, I love the life of the road. You know, I, uh, I, you know, I know what it's like to have a passion and to have something in life that you love so much, and so. I'm happy for my father that he's able to do that, and then I found I found it myself. So that I'm grateful that he showed it to me as well. With that in mind, then what? And this might not be the right word, then, but what is your ambition in music? Well, I, I mean, I hope to. I I want to. In the way that my heroes did, I want to find my a unique sound that that transcends genres and reaches the world, you know. I want to create that kind of music mm -hmm. and I'll spend my whole life um, getting better and better until, until I find that sound that reaches so many people, you know. Okay, I think my time is almost up, so okay. I have one, one more. Yeah. And especially when you started out, when you kind of made your mind up, I'm going to pursue this music. Was it a blessing or, an, or a curse having uh, your last name? Uh, it was a blessing. It is a blessing. You know. I love my father and I love my mother and my family. Mm -hmm. So, very grateful to be a part of the family. No, no, no I didn't, maybe I, I, I don't mean it that way, but, but, but in the sense that it can hinder you also because people have certain. Uh, feelings about it perhaps or? Uh, the only way that it, it sort, sort of, the, 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 I don't only play country music, you know, I sure. play rock and roll. Sure. So, you know, but it really doesn't matter what anybody else thinks at this point mm -hmm. because I'm just, I have to go out there and play the best show that I possibly can. And when people come to the show, I, 99 percent of the time they love it and they tell their friends and so as long as I can keep doing that uh, and having a good show and having good uh, music and good songs and writing good songs then um, then it, it's only a, a positive you know All right yeah 
Lucas, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.